Good morning from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's the 21st of November 2023, 10.38am. Um, I've been out in a little bit of drizzling rain pruning back my lime tree and yesterday in the soaking rain I pruned back my banksia tree. Even though my lungs are not great, well when have they ever been great people? So uh, I pushed myself a little bit. I wanted to tidy up the lime tree because it was sort of hanging all straggly and bedraggled looking and it just sort of looked depressed. I couldn't look at a depressed lime tree in my garden one more day. So uh, um, I've made her even more depressed by hacking into her flesh, right? But she's a tree, she'll recover, she'll push out new, new branches and she'll blossom and she'll bloom and she'll grow in a nice shape and she'll look pretty and she'll be happy again. Just like me, right? It's a work in progress, people. It's a work in progress. Um, so I woke up gifted by a song from Spirit, um, Take Me Dancing, which I had to kind of laugh about. Like, what more do the spirits want from me? I go dancing every weekend with my bedraggled, <coughs> acopic, angry lungs. And I fight off men who can't take no for an answer, so by definition are abusive. And I, um, and I dance, my shamanic dance, and I bring the spirits down through the vortices, down through my body, and I emanate power and love and light and healing and enough fury to activate us for another week. And like, what, more, what, 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 do, what more do the spirits want, you know? My hair looks awful, I know. I'm due to get it done next Tuesday. I'll be all, I'll be all primped and preened with nowhere to go and no man to love me. Oh, tiniest little violin. But it's okay. I was thinking about that this morning and I'm, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about the person who consistently shows his heartfelt intentions to me. And it's very confusing because I, I'm, well, I'm sure he's married and he's not being flirting or seedy or lascivious like, He's just genuinely heartfelt and loving. And so I sat there and I thought about it. I thought, that's the love of my life, isn't it? Someone who's genuine and heartfelt and loving and doesn't have an agenda where he just wants to throw his leg over me and roll on my body and then cast me aside for the next piece of fucking female flesh he, he's probably got lined up on the internet. Are oh, they repulsive? They really are repulsive. So is there any wonder that I'm fixating a little bit on this lovely, kind soul who um, only wants the best for me? It's, it's delightful. But anyway, I'll, I'm not going um, to fall deeply in love or anything. I'll just, I'll just rein, it, rein it back because I know it's an impossible, um, an impossible situation and you know as I say every day I value my true heartfelt friends who treat me with honour and in integrity and decency far more than any quick fumbling fucking you know or sordid short-lived love affair that ends up being torture for 10 years. I've done that before, I've done that more than once over the decades with men who were so perverted and so evil and so dishonouring. Like, I literally shut down my sexuality for three or four um, long, long periods of time, you know. This time it's been nearly a decade. So, um, you know, and I had to, to keep myself safe and to protect my mind and my soul and my spirit, by the way. It's not good for me when I get used and abused like that. Well, it's not good for anyone, male or female, to be used and abused by someone that's supposed to love and nourish and nurture and cherish and protect them. 
So I've had to be my own warrior goddess and my own protector and put myself out into these spaces and hope that I find someone kind and honouring and decent, right? And I have, I have found, I have found them. And they have found me too. But they're unavailable for me as a sexual partner. And um, that's okay. Not everything's about sex, people. I've lived without sex for eons. So I'm wearing this beautiful pendant that my, my, my friend Jared made for me about two years ago, actually. I thought, I haven't worn it much lately, so I'm going to put it on. It's very beautiful fluorite, fluorite, and then he wire-wrapped it. So I have talented friends who do adore me and value and cherish me, and that is my greatest gift on earth. And I'm content with that, truly, truly content. Um, so, today we read from my offerings of even date, the 21st of November. And as usual, it comes with the usual trigger warnings. I haven't skimmed through ahead how bad it's going to be, but, um, you know. It's, it's the Tanya, it's the psychedelic dreamer, it's the warrior goddess. It's the one who survived her own fucked up childhood and her marriage and her divorce and all the other animals that came and went out of my life. So of course there's going to be triggering, of course, because I cannot shrink from my life experiences or my truth, nor can I shrink down my value system of honouring, um, you know, my walk on planet earth and um, leave a record of what actually I experienced because I'm conscious very conscious that I have had younger women come to me for assistance when I used to sit at the coffee shop at Amanda's little kiosk there in Whites Hill um, who were so deeply traumatized and I, I tried to counsel her I did I told her that she can get through it one day at a time just just work it through one day at a time but unfortunately she didn't make it she suicided and um, I have had quite a few people in my life over the years who have completed suicides and um, some of them went through far less than I have in my life which tells you the testament of my fierce spirit determined to survive on this planet and quite frankly I don't even know why like, what have I got out of this arrangement? Complex PTSD, poverty, um, you know, dishonour and disrespect by certain entities, a government house, poverty, unable to achieve things. It's, it's a travesty in three stages. But I'm no longer the maiden, and I'm certainly no longer the matron since my, my last daughter abandoned me. And I'm now fully in crondom, in crone mode. In my crone years, when I should be a grandmother holding my progeny in my arms and delighting in them, well, I was robbed of that by my government, wasn't I? The last remnants of my geriatric mother's uh, fertility <laughs> blown to pieces you bastards you bastards but anyway so my line stops with my girls and maybe it's a good thing since all we bring forth generation to generation is more and more trauma of just different flavors and different variations but but the evil is the same, isn't it? The intergenerational trauma we inherited from my parents surviving World War Two, and um, you know, our 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 progeny surviving the COVID epoch. Oh dear goddess, it doesn't bear thinking about what our future holds for us. We can only hope that we find more Ubuntu willingness 
to cleave together as communities and to support each other and have each other's backs and that my people, my humanity on earth find the courage to be defiant and say no when the, when the government elitist global media paradigm tries to enforce things on us that we know in our heart and soul are not healthy for our human bodies. Learn to say no, people, and mean it, and stand by it. Freedom is the hill I die on. Freedom, which has cost me even love relationships over the decades, because as soon as a man tries to oppress me, control or dominate me, sayonara, sweethearts. Um, you know, it, it was enough in my childhood being terrorised on a daily basis without having that as an adult woman as well. So, but I'm seeing the beauty slowly coming out, the soul slowly coming back to life. I see it every weekend at the club, you know, the sweetness of certain souls that look at me with true honour and affection and kindness and I'm blessed by that and I am strengthened by that and ennobled by it and may long may it continue may each soul light up and light the next person and the next person and the next person till we get as close to an Ubuntu paradigm as, as we can get um, not be in it all together for something that is anti-humanist and actually designed to destroy us as a species. But the Ubuntu where we stand together and we're prepared to pick up the broken and the lost and hold them precious and say, we're running together as one. We're holding each other up as one. We will protect each other as one. As, as much as is humanly possible because life is short and precarious and always has been by nature of life. But whether your days be short or long on this planet, you take responsibility for your life and you make it so beautiful and so honourable and so worthy that people stand back and look at you in genuine awe. Because if you can do it, they can do it too. So that's my message today. Even though I, I go around a little bit in circles, I know my mind, I'm very tired. I'm very tired. And I'm stressing about seeing the urologist on Thursday. I'm sure everything will be fine. She's a wonderful woman. Um, my, my, my doctor chose, you know, will have chosen wisely for me, but I'm still nervous. I'm nervous about finding out what the outcome is too. And it's all that, that living in that, that, that shadow lands of not knowing, you know, but what will be, will be positive or negative. I will soldier through it as I have soldiered through every other aspect of my life and it will happen sometimes breath by breath moment by moment sometimes inexorably in agony through days and weeks and months but I, I will fight my way through it as I have always always done because my life is just as precious as the next person's So today's offerings, memories, 21st of November, 2023. Ah, oh, whimsically while tr trimming back my um, lime tree, which I see I've got to get on a ladder and trim the top a little bit. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice if I had a man to help me around the garden? That's actually my partner that actually, you know, helps me a bit, has my back. And then I kept pruning. And I thought, no, it won't be nice because they'll expect things of me that I might not be able to offer. 
and they'll put demands on me. And I can do this. I'm strong. I can cut a freaking branch off a freaking tree. And off I went, smiling to myself. Hair flying in the wind. <laughs> Freedom, people. Freedom means I have to do things by myself and it's hard sometimes. But anyway, I don't have my cleaning lady this week because I had to cancel because she comes on a Thursday. So I have to do my own housework this week. Oh, wow. Well, I don't care. If I don't feel well, I just won't do it. I don't care. It's only a week. But it's amazing. You have one little interruption and everything goes to hell. Just say. Anyway, I'm not bothered. I said, to, it doesn't matter. One missing out one week. So that's my musings and meanderings and anxiety type worrying worries for today, which are trivial and little little things, really. In the broad scheme of things, they're very, very minor. Come on, why is this not working? Right. Here we have a picture hmm, of my beautiful foster cat, my beautiful girl. Sophie lying in bed with me and I took a photo because it was very unusual for Sophie girl to lie in bed with me. She was a very nervous pussy cat and um, she loved me but she didn't like hanging out with me much. I guess because mainly socks and Beauregard were always with me. So we were lying there together on my bed all pretty and pink enjoying life together even her little paws are bright pink i miss her she was a scatter brain and a nervous pussy cat but she was a lovely cat and that photo was taken 21st of november 2014. i think she died in 2019 or was that penny i lost one a year for, for three years it was awful was it Penny or her? I think Penny went first, then it was Sophie, then it was Socks. And I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's a consequence of the smart meter too. It's why I never feel right. Fucking radiation poisoning. Fuck me. Anyway. Here's a photo I took. 2022 of a brace, a, a, a cuff I made out of copper piping. So I was quite proud of that. And here, no, 21st of November 2021. My daughter, Crystal Ahrens, is one of the voices in this podcast. Chapter 3, Inki or Iki. The Mysteries of Korkuparipal. Korkuparipal, I can't even pronounce it. But anyhow, I always promote my daughter's work because I'm a mother and I produce that little star of mine. She doesn't promote my work, though, does she? Doesn't support me when I think I'm dying. No. So, yes, hmm, that will sit with me for a long, long time, especially given how I pulled all stops out to support her last show when she was being massively sabotaged by the most evil, disgusting, low-level entities. I rose to the occasion, supported her, even though she didn't even want me to come to the actual show. A mother's love is a powerful thing and should never be underestimated, just saying. But anyway, here I sit alone, waiting for Godot. Godot who never comes. But death will come to me eventually. Death is a given, people. But I rise above it, holding my own in my sacred space, I'm wearing the little witch broomstick earrings that my, my beautiful Jared made for me too. So he can see 
I don't hear from her much these days either. I must be really good at pissing everyone off with my truth speaking, but too bad. I feel very, very, very much abandoned and isolated and marginalised. But here he is. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the beautiful gifts he gave me. Let no man, woman or child say that I don't value all the gifts shown to me. Spiritual and material, physical, corporeal and manifested by the gods. I am grateful and I do appreciate all that has been done for me. I just have a seeping open wound right now that I, I'm trying to staunch but it's very, very hard because it's been too long and too, far too long that this has been going on, this cruelty. And um, I, I, I don't... I, I see no reason why I should deserve to be treated like this now that I'm full-blown chromedom phase in my life, at my most vulnerable perhaps ever in my life, given my health is precarious and I'm getting older and I'm isolated. You know, tricksters playing games on the internet, my own family, core family, drifting away. Well, my daughter's in a new relationship, so she's got better things to do. Hopefully creating a grandchild for me inside her ageing womb. Some part nanobot she'll give birth to. Oh, dear goddess. None of our children will be fully human ever again. That's a horrendous thought. An absolutely horrendous thought. Oh well, I'm dying as a human. That was a hill I chose to live and die on. A full-blown human for which now I am othered and abandoned. Noise. 21st of November, 2020. Socks fought me every inch of the way as I carried him here and whilst holding him up, set up the hammock. Now he is <clears throat> now he is lying in the hollow underneath me in a state of contentment. He has not been outside much in recent weeks, and today is a good day for snoozing between worlds. Always snooze between the worlds, people. That's when your your ancestors that love you, your spirit guides, your soul guardians tell you exactly how to continue to exist on this planet and if you don't listen to them there are consequences that reach down through the generations and my daughter who was also a shaman should have known better because she was warned not just by me but by the spirits Seed your soul, seed your own soul at your own consequences, which are dire, very, very fucking dire. But here, an ancient, an ancient witch, um, I think she was called Mother Shipton, prophesied back in, I think it was the 14 or 1500s, I'll have to Google it. Might have been the 1600s. I think it was the 1600s. Mother Shipton in England, a prophetess. She prophesied the time will come when men will not be like men and women will not be like women. And, uh, and women will lie with pussies on their lap instead of loving partners and husbands to support them and care for them when they're vulnerable, when they're ageing, or in my case, when I was vulnerable, birthing my babies. And all I had for comfort and solace was a cat on my lap. Now I don't even have my cats because they've entered Valhalla. Heinous it is. Heinous. Mother Shipton, read it. 
and be horrified. She saw far, far into the future. And uh, we're living that nightmare now. Just say. <clears throat> but as Jews we say, but prayer, charity, sadaka. Prayer, charity, and good deeds. Um, protect us from the stern decree, or so we hope. In other words, hold your head up high, continue to be a decent and honourable human being for the, all the days that you have on earth, whether short or long. Hold up your end of the fabric of the multiverse in these dark times, with your pussy on your lap, watching all the men dancing around you, playing this sick, macabre, false game, and wait for the one to light up whose heart is truly yours and is willing and able and desiring to make a full commitment to you. And let the others dance by, tap them on the ass as they go, have a little bit of mischief and whimsy with it. <clears throat> But know who, know who you are and what you deserve on this planet and stand in your own authority and integrity and honour and dance and sing and play and be joyous. <coughs> we, will <coughs> we will soothe that stern, dark, foreboding prophecy one day at a time. We're going to make life beautiful again. We're going to have men behave like real men and treat women with decency and honour and valour and authentic love and care. And we're going to have women behave like real women and cleave to their men who treat them with decency, honour, integrity and care and return it back in kind. True loves people, not, not the morass of evil I see out there every day. The fake, the fakery and the dishonour and the lasciviousness and the cheapness. Hmm. Because I survived that too. Back in 2014, 15, 2012. 2012 to 2015, I survived that too. And I did participate in it too. I admit, I was a little bit naughty acting out, looking for love, hoping against hope to find the one. And then I shut down all sexuality, but I kept going out and dancing for my own soul, edification and joy. And I'm still searching, not not over, overly, you know, aggressively or enthusiastically because I've given up hope, but I still keep one eye peeled for the one. And the one, the one is coming, but I don't know what time frames. Maybe in the next, I really do believe it'll be in the next dimension now. I think I'm I think I'm done with this life that I'm running out of time and if the one showed up now it's too little and too late it'll just be a giant tease and a game and a farce so there is that you have to laugh people I was never never lucky in love which is an understatement tortured I was utterly tortured for decades and the spirit still wanders through occasionally and I go, get out of my house. You're not welcome here. <clears throat> he wants, he, I don't, what does he want actually? I'll find out when I cross over myself. Be ready, boy. It's not going to be pretty. Only God, only God 
can intervene against that one. Now, why is my computer turned off? Why? Sabotage. Sabotage. 11, 11 p.m. <coughs> Synchronicity from the angels. I saw this last night too. I'm baking bread in the bread machine. It's the first time I've used it in several years. I hope it turns out okay. And a former Facebook friend who befriended me on Facebook and then went psycho on me down the track, so I'm not going to say her name because I don't honour these weird-ass fucking imps, asked me, how was the bread, Tanya Aarons? And I replied, very good. It was ready at 2am and smelled so delicious that I crawled out of bed and ate a slice. And then she replied, I'd love you to join me in a five rhythm Sunday sweat dance one week. It's a great release. I think it would be good for you. And then I replied... <laughs> I love a Nigella-style midnight snack. I was still obviously chewing on the bread, thinking about it. And I then I said, I would love to in theory, but it's at 9am and that's too early for me. I dance by the moonlight like the night owl I am. Weird old bird who falls off my perch regularly. And then she replied, I get that. I stare at the moon on occasions and conjure up the goddess. In my earthly mode, I wake early in summer but sleep about 10 hours and wake so much later in winter. <coughs> so much so that my moods are affected by the seasons. She's a survivor of CSA like me, so yes, we, we are very much affected by seasonal, seasonal mood disorders. I said, I replied to her, I suffer seasonal mood disorders, every change of season. You can set a clock by me. I also predict storms, usually days ahead, as in my body starts somatizing and I feel all jangled and crazy. Oh, that last storm we had, what date was that? I was being stirred up by that, that trickster, that, that twat. Um, but anyway... Oh, I tell you what, if I'd had a hot red-blooded man and that was available and, and, and genuine and near me and that I'd built up a rapport with, he would have got laid that day. I was whew, I was off the Richter scale with that storm. It was, it was extremely powerfully innovating, but also a little bit disturbing given that I actually had a man showing interest. Well... Wow pretending to show interest you know, I don't know what the fuck that game was anyway next don't play games with me boys I'm too smart I'm too old and I'm too wild it's one of my superpowers from long-term trauma somatizing storms I had to train myself to ride through that bitch like an intrepid sailor or warrior goddess. And she replied, I hear you. So you see, all the women that have experienced horrendous abuse, we're very primal in our body, in our core, and um, we feel things spiritually for metres outside of our auric field. So men that used to approach me at the casino that didn't have good intentions to me, I had already felt them before they even got stood beside me, crawling along the walls like vermin they used to do. By the time they reached me, I'd be like, what do you want? Why can't you walk across the floor like a real man? Why are you slithering like a slithering verminous earwig? And they'd be like, run away. I can't deal I can't deal with men that can't behave like a normal man. I mean everyone on this planet now, every mortal on this planet has trauma issues, right? But freaking just have some cooth, have some grace. 
Have some dignity for the love of all the gods. 21st of November, 2018. <clears throat> I had a lovely time with Crystal last night. We had jackpot noodles. Then we walked around the city and looked at the shops. We found a perfume I really liked in the Maya Centre. I loved the bottle, which had a snake coiled around it. The fragrance was a woody floral. Gorgeous. I'm trying to remember what brand it was. I never ended up buying it. It was hideously expensive. It's time I bought myself some lovely perfume again. Why am I living like a freaking pauper? Because I am one. But every now and then I do spoil myself, you know, once a year or so. Um, I, was, I, I, don't, I don't need to live in the gravel rash and the shit and the, the mire of other people's muck. I am a woman of dignity and honour. I am a warrior goddess and I deserve to have nice things too. Occasionally, according to my budget. I have done a very naughty thing, very naughty. I used some of my advance, which that money was actually designated to go to buy a passport. But I got so traumatised because I couldn't get the passport forms to print out that I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll just, I can't be bothered, I'll do it later. So I used that money <laughs> to buy some shop, shop plates to make little beautiful little pendants with and I'm, I'm hellishly excited so I've bought some silver I'm gonna have a crack at it when the silver arrives I hope I've got the right thickness of silver though but yeah I bought I bought so what I'm telling you is I bought some more tools for my silversmithing which could have really waited because I do want to go home to New Zealand and see Lynn one more time before I die and um my, my fucking malfeasant, betraying, treacherous, abandoning kids will inherit all my tools, right? And they won't even know what to do with it. So it's really quite silly that I'm, I'm, I'm buying these things in. But I am acting as though I've got another 20 years of life ahead of me and that I will be productive for another 20 years. I'm acting as though I have time and I have valor and I have strength and I can keep making beautiful things I'm not giving in so I don't regret those little bits of equipment I bought in silver because I will enjoy making things with them and someone one day might appreciate and value them buy them from me one day maybe I have to get my ass to the markets though it's not going to happen sitting on my my bench making YouTube videos, whining about it, is it? Got to get out there in the world. Oh, dear goddess. I actually loathe going to markets. I really do. It's very triggering for me. Very triggering. Anyway. The gods will bestow upon me what the, go the gods wish me to have in full vibrancy and abundance and prosperity with harm to none and competition from none, so it is done. Flowing to me for my most beneficial outcome and joy and bliss and fucking radiance, people. Radiance. Because otherwise, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered accepting lacklustre, mediocre, mundane, unmeritorious disingenuous blah <laughs> anyway that perfume with the snake wrapped around it I'll have to go in the, I'll have to go in the department store and look for the brand again it, I used to know what the brand was obviously I couldn't remember it when I wrote up about it because um, I would have mentioned it anyway it'll come to me it will come to me quickly and easily if I focus on it hard enough. And um, I've got more important things to focus on than a bottle of perfume. So, you know, 
I'm not going to invest energy into that. Crystal gave me the gorgeous Kalaka earrings. I was delighted. Most of all, I enjoyed her company. I was so I I am so grateful and happy to have my beautiful, talented daughter back. Child of the universe and gift of my heart. Gifted to you, people of Earth, since she has zero interest in me as her mother now. Say la vie. Say the big boys. It goes to show you never can tell. All that struggle and effort I put into raising my kids alone and unassisted by and large. Wasted. A waste of time and energy. But it was my role as a mother to get them to adulthood and kick them out into the world and let them be free and happy. So we're doing that now, aren't we? They have their walk. I have mine alone on planet Earth, even as I'm potentially dying now. It's bullshit, people. It's bullshit. But as a child, I, I had a neighbour, elderly neighbour, who was very elderly, actually, in her 80s, who was a Scottish woman, and her name was Euphemia Walker, Effie for short. She wore a long, thick Viking braid, literally reached down down to here, down to her thigh, and she would tuck it, tuck her hair back behind a belt, the braid. And she wore long skirts, or sort of still dressed a little bit in the Edwardian style, and blouses. She was plump like me. She was a bitter old, cantankerous old lady, didn't like children. So I would flax jump off my parents' um, shed down into her, onto her property, which butted up against ours. I'd slide down the fat flax bushes like a little fairy imp, and I'd land in her garden and I'd dust myself off, and she'd be sitting there glaring at me. In a very strong Scottish brogue, she'd say, What are you doing here, child? And she hated me with a pat. And I went, Oh, sorry, I just landed. <laughs> <laughs> she was a bit demented. She probably thought I meant I literally just landed from out of space or something like a fairy. And she'd be like, get ye off me land, child. I'd be, okay, bye, Mrs Walker. And I'd scurry off down her front path, off back to my house. So I had this weird relationship with this old lady. Maybe she put a curse on me that I'll end up like her, all alone, isolated and abandoned by her kids, by the way. That's what happened to her too. That was her fate too. Maybe the old biddy put a curse on me that I shall never have true love or happiness or a loving family. And I want to vomit when I think about it. The grief sits right here. <clears throat> but, you know, I've tried hard to break that curse. I have tried very, very fucking hard. But I also can't, um, I can't betray my own values of freedom and safety and honour and respect and kindness and sweetness. I can't allow any less than that in my life. So here I sit alone whining for YouTube. I haven't got my Viking braid. I wanted a Viking braid just like Mrs Walker's. A long, thick braid so I too could go. What are you doing on my land, child? And pay it forward. But I would never curse a sweet little girl with a shitful life like the one the gods gifted me. I would never do that to any child. And uh, my curse came way before Mrs Walker. She was just the mirror that reminded me of how much I could be hated for no good reason. Just my merest existence on planet Earth. And if truth be told, she was probably jealous of my freedom and my liveliness and my, my childish youth and wonder and jealous that she didn't have grandchildren visiting her, actually. 
and her bitterness superseded and so she'd drive the one little thing that would have been quite willing to befriend her away. Sometimes we put up walls so high and so fierce that we even drive away those that were and are willing to love us. So I must remember that too. Not to be too ornery and difficult when people come cap in hand and say, I'm sorry I was a dick. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> As if that's ever going to happen. But I live in hope, right? <laughs> fantastic sense of humor you just gotta work with me baby <laughs> oh you're gonna laugh oh i tell you what i'm looking forward to going dancing this friday night i don't know why it's like i'm fiercely innovated i'm like <sighs> and honestly it's not my alter egos that are playing this weekend it's juddy with um with um, Ramjet, but Juddy keeps an eye out over me too, so I'm, I'll be okay. I'll be okay, but oh, I can feel. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I can feel the magic happening, babies, and a little flowering in my spirit. Like that. No, I won't say it. That sounds awful. But, yeah, I will, because it's funny. You know that creature, that, that f big thing that comes up in Stranger Things that looks like a giant freaking face-eating creature? I feel like that, like I'm just going to go... <coughs> <laughs> but I won't, because I'm not like that. But I just that, I feel that energy rising. Hmm. It's a nice feeling, actually. <clears throat> Here in 2018, I, I, I put the prayer, Birkat, Birkat HaGomel, a Jewish prayer of gratitude. <laughs> I must have been feeling sardonic because I write, after seeing one too many ghouls from my past, <laughs> a prayer of gratitude that I'm not like them. Oh, dear goddess, it's grotesque. It really is grotesque. <clears throat> <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy One, the true judge. From now on, I intend to manifest only joy in my life. Yeah, baby. <laughs> if you are not vibing with me, get off the bus, Gus. Ain't nobody got time for toxic shock syndrome and festers. And boundary violators. Ach. And then shit got real. I must remember my psychic intuition has rarely led me astray. Now I know after that session that I can trust no one but myself and God with my life story my heart and soul. What did I say in recent writings about the soul remnants of Judas Iscariot flirting with my last nerve? Ho-hum, message received, over and out. I am safe, but only because I use my intellect and wits to remain so. I am fucking formidable, in, en français, formidable. I like who I am, warrior goddess, mama T. Yes, Tanya, is coming along nicely, but she will not submit a uh -uh, fool. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what session I'm referring to. 2018. Mm. 
must have been one of my shamanic healings I was receiving in those, those days. Somebody must have rattled my cage. Once I was a zombie, but this is still 2018, people. Once I was a zombie, but I rose again in all my broken down grief and tormented life. And along came the hallelujah, and it was beautiful. And it fueled my soul with joy and hope and enough life force to cut the crap and scratch myself a new groove to begin the begin to strut my stuff and call their bluff. Only the rare and precious can truly see me and comprehend my journey from oblivious, oblique obliteration to oblivion. Oh bloody, oh blada, oh fuck off, whatever. I am becoming all that I am and all that I could ever hope to be. Free, blissful, loved. Amen Vasila. Glory to God and all his manifestations that brought me back to my own warrior, goddess, heart and eternal mind, naked and sacred in my own all. I've decided looking at this video that I don't like this dress actually much anymore. Hmm, I wonder why. Unquenchable, indomitable, courageous in my love. Why don't I like this dress anymore? It's a nice dress. It's handmade. It's very it's made in Hawaii. So it's very Polynesian. What is it I'm not liking about it? Oh well. Unquenchable, indomitable, courageous in my love. And then I followed it up because that's my theme song. You can play that at my funeral. And you can envisage me howling like a banshee from the rafters. The cranberries. Zombie. That is my spirit. Last Thursday, I was tweaked by spirit while shopping at the Salvation Army shop. Songs from my former family. A love song my womanising de facto stepfather used to sing to my mother. Lay your head upon your pillow. Put your warm and tender body next to mine. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I sat up and took notice. No accidents in the universe. I stood in trepidation of the message. I was shaken and discombobulated. Friday came and I readied myself for my epic dancing. What shall I wear? I felt guided, instructed, ordered to wear my long skirt and red corset. What, which reminds me, I'm gonna take them to be dry cleaned, my corsets. Why, I thought, why not, came the answer. I wrinkled my nose in mirth. Someone is pushing my buttons again. So I did what I was told and wore my evening garb with elegance and aplomb, and got on with the business of living and dancing and being my most beautiful, joyous, authentic self. Then, as the gods would have it, my former lover showed up, playing his usual games. <coughs> I was both thrilled and mortified. That love that burns in my soul, sizzling with both wonder and fury. So when he sent his friend to spy on me, I could not help passing on my message about game players 
and time wasters who could have been my partner in my usual anachronistic, vulgar, but witty way. Then I fell into exhaustion on Saturday and Sunday as well, then got hammered with insomnia. Ah, what am I not integrating here? It hit me this morning. The song sung by another cruel and faithless creep, much beloved by my mother, Case, and my former twin soul, slash demon spawn, slash beloved, share the same birthday and the same Machiavellian proclivities. Except that the lover and I were lovers, however briefly, several years ago, by mutual consent. He did not try to sexually assault me like Case in my childhood, or hit me, or throw me into walls when I became enraged at Case's sexually harassing my nine and ten year old self. But he did betray me in other ways, knowing I was truly, deeply, madly in love with him. Feckless, fickle, fucktard. The last straw that cracked the Tanya's back was using George to humiliate me. Getting to me via my friends, as he is not man enough to communicate with me face to face. But I have insomnia and an aching, bleeding heart and my soul is screaming because I did not deserve this. I cannot comprehend this, this love, this life or the vapid two-bit players. <clears throat> Lay your head upon your pillow, put your warm and tender body close to mine. Well, I have Beauregard and the cats who love me in all my glory, loyal and true. No human lover has ever stood by me for long or remained in my life or been loyal and generous and true. At the last ecstatic dance, I set my intention for a true love and for courage and to let go of sabotage, my own self-sabotage and others. So a week later, I was put to the test. Interesting. Did I pass or fail? Why are the gods of love still tormenting me? They should know what is in my mortal heart. Weigh it accordingly, measured against the false perversions of fake men. Stiff as a board, light as a feather. Horus awaits. But I have a strange inkling. There is much more to this love story. And I will find out in time what or who is truly mine. But I haven't, re I, ha I still haven't, have I? Five years later, I, I, I'm still completely oblivious to who truly deeply loves me and wants to be my partner and will treat me with honour and decency for the rest of our lives together in a harmonious, loving partnership. I still, I still don't know, haven't met that person. It's, it's awful, given how late, late, in, late in the life journey I am. But as the gods are whispering in my ear right now, you were never late, Tanya. You are always right on time because it all comes down to fate.
sad but true. 2.27am, another night of insomnia. Ah. Hmm. 21 November 2017. <clears throat> I need a drink. I need another drinky poos, babies. Mama needs another cup of tea or something. Today I witnessed two young blonde women, one holding a one-year-old baby in her arms in the RSPCA shop at Stones Corner. Her sister was trying on a second-hand wedding dress and asked the assistant to help zip her up. I was focused on trying on a pair of shoes that were lovely quality, but the right shoe was a tiny bit tight. I quietly observed the young woman with the infant, calmly shushing the little one. But there was so much sadness in her eyes and I decided that it was probably just exhaustion as kids are very tiring little creatures. So I was surprised when I got to the counter to pay that the young beautiful blonde woman was now fully garbed in a hijab with only her eyes on show and standing sadly and patiently beside her was her sister holding the baby girl. I thought nothing much of this until they left the shop. Then the staff told me she was getting married on Thursday and had only just bought the dress. Oh my, she looked so sad for a new bride-to-be, regardless of the hijab. I worried for her throughout the day as I was once that bride buying my own second-hand dress only weeks prior to my wedding. And in my case, the sadness was due to the fact that my father-in-law was dying and he did indeed die two nights before my wedding. So my wedding day was the most surreal, happy, sad, sad, happy, confusion of emotion and it was literally hijacked when my new groom demanded I get out of my beautiful dress that I had worn for the 20 minute ceremony and change into other clothes as he resented me already from the moment the ketubah, the Jewish wedding certificate, was signed that he now had a wife and responsibilities. <coughs> <clears throat> the funeral was the very next day and now you know why I have never wanted to marry again that's how traumatising even my wedding day was the funeral was the very next day I felt shell-shocked and a bit horrified and I had loved my husband's father and the Wellington Jewish community had treated me with more kindness than my new in-laws. Uh, and by that, I don't mean my father and mother-in-law, who were decent, but my sister-in-law and her husband and the, 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 the eldest brother. They, they were so vicious to me. It was appalling, really appalling. So I married into another toxic shock syndrome family, which I then had to jump from one foot to the other constantly trying to survive not just my own filthy family of origin but these vicious bloodless dogs as well <clears throat> is it any wonder my throat's closing up and in, in ghastly horror to this day so i thought naively that being a jewish wife and ultimately a mother was going to be the right path for me, in spite of the awful beginnings. Because I'm stubborn and intrepid and stand in awe before my God. Like an idiot I was, an absolute idiot. But there is that. Well, it wasn't. And there, but for the grace of God and my serenity, safety and sanity, went I. 
but it was a presage of that albatross I often talk about. Still with me to this day, that bird sits hunkering behind my shoulder, waiting, waiting, waiting for my life to finally begin and be beautiful and loved and joyous. The albatross will have to transmute into a beautiful phoenix and fly away and let me have my true love at long last. Won't you, bird? I wanted to run after the two young women and say, <clears throat> don't marry into a religion that hates women, that bit by bit robs you of life and joy and freedom. I wanted to embrace the bride-to-be and whisper in her ears, run, run far and wide. And keep running, but most of all, run home to the only true love you will ever have, yourself. Myself. But then I realised she might be happy and life as a strict Muslim woman might give her security and joy. But that dark shadow of ancient, patriarchal, Middle Eastern religions that takes sweet, innocent Australian or New Zealand women and subverts them into castaways, locked behind mechitzas, mechitz, mechitz, mechitzas, mechitzas. I can't pronounce it, but the barrier in the Orthodox synagogue that separates the men from the women. Or hijabs, which is also a barrier that separates a woman's true soul and beauty from the eyes of men. Hangs low like the sword of Damocles or the fruitful promise of the hanging gardens of Babylon, plucked and sucked and never mind, you get my vibe. And I've noticed there's a sharp piece on the edge of my glasses. They broke recently. If you can see, I glued them up. Fuck. I'm going to have to go to the optometrist and get a replacement. More money, more, more dishonour, more, more time wasting. I'm dreading it. It's why I fixed it myself. It's how much I hate having to deal with any health professionals of any kind now. But... I'm going to have to go. These are, these are cracking apart again. Fuck. Poverty, people. It's all I got from a life lying in bed next to men. Poverty and dishonour and disrespect and abuse and cowardly dogs that play games and head for the hills, right? That's all I... That has been all I have rested out of this life. So excuse me, but on bad days, I still want to kill myself and I have to pull myself up and say, no, you are beautiful, you are wise, you are worthy, you are astonishing, you are amazing and you deserve to live fully and vibrantly and joyously and to fucking thrive, Tanya, and I will make it happen. With every cell and membrane in my body, I will make it happen for you, Tanya. And I have tried with my silversmithing and my dancing for many years. Gods know how I have tried to thrive on this planet. Against all the odds. Including the current regime we are living through. So when the day comes that I'm not alive anymore, either by my own hand or by someone else's evil malfeasance, know this, I fucking tried and I put in every ounce of every day into loving my life back and to healing myself. And every low-level entity dog 
that still come out to try and destroy me, crawl away back to your original source, you low-life scum dogs, because I have survived all of you. Bigger, more vicious, more dangerous even than you. <clears throat> so here I put out a prayer. I segue, but I'm getting... I'm getting fired up, people, because it's awful. It's awful how I was treated as a young woman, and it's awful seeing that young girl with her baby in her arms about to sell herself out into decades of horror and a form of slavery. It was clear she wasn't marrying for love because she was grief-stricken, the poor girl. O oh God of Abraham, Ibrahim, Jacob and Isaac, brother of Ishmael, thou cruel and vengeful, lustful denouncer of women. I beg you, you and the holiest one, creator of all that is, was, will be. Give these girls a happy, blessed, peaceful, and loving life. And if you can't or won't do that, then at least give them the strength, the courage, and the support to run wild and free and find their own inner goddess. And let no man or gods <clears throat> ever destroy them or me, ever, ever, ever again. So mote it be. A bit later I wrote, Nobody likes you. They all think you are a freak, she hissed. One of my female stalkers at the Kassan, at the Kassan. her name was Lana and I'm running it together in my head, Lana at the casino. Oh, she was an evil. Oh, she was an evil, evil creature. Slathering with spite and envy every fucking weekend for me. Without respite. I won't say it, but you know what I'm thinking, don't you? I should, I wish... I wish I could go back to barbarian times. She should have she should have paid the ultimate price for her harassment of me that went on for years to the point where I finally snapped. Tried to take my own life. Not just because of her, but all the other evil dogs that were surrounding me at that time period. Twenty twenty first, twenty second of August two thousand fifteen. It was too much. And what do the gods do? Vomited me back to earth. And for what reason? Here we are, eight years later. What is the reason? Why am I still here? Hmm? It's a rhetorical question. There's no answer to that. Because they kicked me back here to earth in 2019 also. Because someone up there wants me here for whatever obscure reason that makes no sense to my own mind. Someone up there wants me here. And their love is eternal and powerful and not to be trifled with. That's just a note to my enemies. You think you're coming up against me. You don't like me because I'm old and you perceive me as vulnerable, weak. You don't like that I make jewellery or you don't like that I'm pining for my true love or you don't like my, my Slavic German face or you don't like my vagina which I was told was ugly by a former lover or you just plain don't like me. I don't fucking care. I'm alive in spite of you. Probably just purely to spite some of you now. 
but I'm not alive here by choice. I'm putting out all this effort and energy into trying to find my one true love partner who will treat me with honour and genuine care and respect and tenderness and romance and passion and friendship as a reason to stay alive, people, because there is no reason to be alive at this point of time. But I carry on because that is my path as a shaman to choose life against all the odds, as I have done as a religious Jewish young bride, choosing life against all the odds. When life was so untenable, I wanted to die even then as a young bride. Okay? 58 and a half years I have walked on this planet, and even with the recent COVID infestation, still haven't died. I get these weak, pathetic people come up to me, <clears throat> really weak and pathetic and snivelling. Oh, you know, oh, the COVID, oh, if we don't do this, we're going to die. And I said to them, I said to them, do you know how hard it is to die? It's, it's actually not that simple. It's just as difficult to die as it is to be ushered into this planet by a labouring woman. My labours took 28 hours each time. So, it's it's not easy to die, people. people. Start valuing your lives. Start standing in your own authority and integrity as a human being. I've had to. I've had to start putting real high value on my own life when I was under so much attack that I just wanted peace. I wanted shalom. I wanted out of this hell loop. I really did. And it was a, it was a mark of honor to my own spirit that I wanted out. But the gods decreed that I stay here. So here we have it. <coughs> I'll start again because I've segued. I know, I know, I'm annoying. You have the power to switch me off at any given time and never come to my channel again. So you're not a hostage of my love, um, but you, you're welcome to watch and learn or you're welcome to just slide away with a little schmicey on your tuchus, gentle little pat on your bottom. Go be free and live your best life with honour and integrity and courage. Corazon. But don't come snivelling to me about how hard life is. Because I've done. I've done it. I've lived it. Nobody likes you. They all think you are a freak. Mm -hmm. She hissed. One of my female stalkers at the casino. I started to dissemble inside my heart and gut and soul. For so many decades, the recipient of so much hatred, contempt and abuse, so accustomed to it. Instead, I let the initial reaction from my most primal core dissipate like smoke on water. It was not the first time a spiteful, ugly-souled, hateful person has attacked me. Everyone hates me. So be it. I learned that at home as an infant and at school as a child, at university, in my marriage, from latter lovers who tried to squeeze the life out of my throat Eventually, even from my own children, I am hated. My superpower? I survived to outlive most of those evil, perverted bastards. And in recent months, even my stalkers have slowly crawled away to the holes they came out of. Go. Be awesome somewhere else. 
they cost me peace and they viciously attacked and slandered to the point they cost me true love as well. That was the most cruel of all, stealing any hope of a loving relationship from me out of petty, envious spite. But a real man would have seen through it. A real man would have chosen me anyway. But complex PTSD and decades of unresolved grief and rage that is eked out by former and current abusers, leeching the pus that runs like a river of fire through my body, always under the surface, sometimes pushed deep, deep down, and when needed, can boil over in a nanosecond as I learned to channel my rage in order to survive. Everyone hates me. Sigh. I am okay with that. If that is who I am, beautiful, fierce, powerful and stoic, if that is what it means to show up and represent myself over and over and over again. To fly in the face of moronic, baseless, useless hate. Then tonight we ride, sisters, because sooner or later you too will earn the mantle of courage and decency and a warrior's gaze upon the debased and the profane. Sooner you'll raise yourself up and shine. They hate you when you lie down and eat your own body in a tormented living death. And they hate you when you stand up and are counted and fucking fight. And they will hate you for ever being born. And they will hate you when you are long dead. But that is their problem. I will strive, I will continue to strive to overcome my enemies wherever I meet them and I will always stand by my own integrity. Hate turns to respect, sometimes to love. It is a backhanded gift, a poison, slowly seeping, which spreads like a plague and needs containment. Without love, who would I be now? <laughs> Indeed. How beautiful on a day when I was feeling so bereft and unwell <clears throat> and I wrote about all my ugly, putrid enemies. I was blessed with such beautiful and abundant gifts of love from my lovely friends. So you see, one should never give up and always remember there are loving earth angels out in the world who manifest greatness and beauty for me for each of us in life. Thank you all. I love you. Thank you to my beautiful friend, Sally Castle, who is currently on holiday in Texas. 
She has just sent me an assortment of groceries, which is lovely and always appreciated. Thank you for your lovely gifts. Yummy. And earlier that day I wrote, <clears throat> No more new potatoes for breakfast. It took a long it took a little long while, but better out than in. I feel marginally better now. Marginally. I went to vote at pre polling while feeling nauseous, probably from the new potatoes I cooked for breakfast fresh from my garden but meh because no one told me because i'm an idiot that when you dig up new potatoes you're supposed to leave them for a few days to get rid of any juices or toxins or whatever you know that they were they were so fresh they they actually poisoned me i had food poisoning from them <laughs> well i didn't know did i never grown potatoes before then went to look at Stone's Corner, as it has been a year since I last went there. Wow, looking much nicer. Lots of new, freshly renovated shops. I bought a skirt and top in the RSPCA store, although it was very overpriced. Then popped into Aldi to get a few items. Then raced back home, as the nausea is worse. I'm not having a run of health lately. So bloody annoying. Oh well, time to crawl back into bed and watch Gaia.com on my iPhone and rest. Not realising I have food poisoning. Jesus. I don't need to worry about my enemies killing me when I'm constantly in a state of self-harming myself by doing stupid things like eating freshly dug up potatoes. The love of all the gods. <clears throat> My cousin Megan Phillips. Personally, cousin, I think you should have a cleansing on your house and rid yourself of the ugly Wairua spiritual attacks on you. You will feel lighter. Do each corner of your fare, that means house, then each corner of your yard. Use water or even rock salt will do. And a bit of a karakia in the name of your God. Can't hurt to try. Love you, cousin, and wish you well always. Kiss naught. She's right. I needed a cleansing. 21st of November, 2016. Waiting on Jared and Harvey, lying in my hammock. My bones and my legs are aching from Saturday night's epic effort. I don't think it is septic arthritis, although I have one more antibiotic tablet left to take. I think I am over the worst of my nervous breakdown I experienced last week. I actually, gasp, feel happy again. That's a miracle, people, how I can spin on a dime now by choice and by will I need to go with the flow as I never know how long that warm fuzzy comfortable feeling will settle upon my heart and mind it is always so variable and can leach out of me like a bad dose of diarrhea dank dark and liquid but in the style of Kabbalists alchemists dreamers, prophets, and caged little lovebirds living on hope and sunshine, I can turn that shit to gold. It's all in the mind fuck, babies. Attitude is everything. Love is everything. Hope, that haggard liar, everything. Everything and no thing. Um, and I've written this in response to some mean, I think, but I haven't posted the mean. So anyway. Ghastly. If I lived near as a white Jewish woman, I would sit with the people protesting on their land. I have suffered horrific systemic abuse here in Queensland. 
a judge who screwed over every woman in the family courtroom on the day of my property settlement. I lost comparatively little compared to dozens of millionaire wives I watched him ruin that day. I was last to be called. I bollocked the hell out of him. His wig actually slipped sideways. Evil bastard. Then again the abuse from Queensland Police failing to protect me and my children for 18 months in Waterford West when we were under serious attack. Then the utter bullshit when the adult guardian, who in a private room off the record, later apologised to me. What the fuck? Enabled Buck Shura, <clears throat> after he had been reported by the National Bank, for coercing my mother to give him large amounts of money. But I was slandered and demonised, and he, after thieving from my mother, was given power of attorney. Again, with the putrid will dispute. Mention court to me, and I have had so much systemic abuse that I break down literally going to breakdown mode. As each time I was lawfully in the right, but the rights of poor, disenfranchised women and or Jews and their young children have no value in our court system. It was fucking anti-Semitic, anti-humanist and anti-female how I've been treated over the decades whenever I had to go to court for anything. It was the purest, most unadulterated evil. One lawyer actually even had the temerity to point and laugh at me. One of Buck's paid henchmen. I mean, they don't deserve to be alive, these low-life dogs. Never, never mind function as lawyers serving the community. They're putrid and putrescent and evil. I stand with all those people, regardless of colour, gender, race, who are abused daily by our white supremacist, misogynist system. And a bit later, I wrote in response to a meme or an article, it took 125 years to notice something extraordinary in a painting millions have seen. This is why I profoundly believe one should never write anyone off. No matter how damaged or insane society deems them. Humans have their own magic, their own genius, their own innate gifts, often locked away deep inside their mind. And when accessed, such wonder, such beauty, and so much joy can be brought to this life. From one whose own mind and emotions are often too turbulent, especially when I am in love with a man who cannot comprehend the depths and width and crazy swirling abyss of my intensity. Okay, I love that man, but I'm not going to cut off my own ear and gift it to him. He has my prose, my quiet desperation, and shrewish solipsisms to keep him warm and snug at night. Like the other lovers in my life, long gone, he has not realised the jewel in the lumpy, bumbling mound of hobbit flesh. Sigh, sighs. Or rather he has, but he is afraid to really let go 
and love me. Ultimately, I need my freedom of expression, my carefree, twirling mind. Real loves will always come back to me and stay. Time takes time. Yada, 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 boom, tush, bang, maybe next life. Although I pray Hashem lets me just sit amongst the sifi rot in Nirvana after I close my eyes on this life, I just want to never suffer like this ever again. But the gods decree and I, mere mortal, must dance to the tune of the capricious fates and sing with the muses. They are not done with me yet. Twenty one of twenty first of November two thousand and fifteen seven eighteen PM finally sitting down and resting. I have been busy for two days, crystal stuff sorted, garden sorted. I made a candelabra to hang in a tree. Wind is up, perhaps an evening storm. All geared up to pick up little Al Seed with Jared tomorrow morning. Gimpy, here we come. That fucking con artist, evil dog bitch. Well, I had to let it go, otherwise I would have gone truly insane. I am so excited I hardly slept last night. Like a little kid, I don't think I will ever grow up. Nine twenty AM wide awake must be excited about tomorrow. It is already boiling hot outside. I dunked Helga and Heidi in the clamshell pool. They are still figuring out if they liked getting wet. Ha ha they were my two chickens. Hens I mean. I put Mushu and Penny's feet in too. Mushu was rather disgusted and flicked water off his back feet. He looked like a drunken sailor. I think little Alcide will like his pool though. Crystal had it for Ramon and Suki. I miss my bunny kin. 21st of November, 2014. 3.47 p.m. Hot, I got up at one-ish. I've had a shower and already I feel icky, sticky, yicky, picky and slicky. I might go out tonight if I can be bothered to venture out in the heat. I gave my chooks a mixture of frozen veggies, peas, watermelon, cucumber and berries that I mixed all together. They are not keen on the peas and veggies, spoilt little velociraptors. 've got spirit in my ears saying get yourself some new dresses Tanya new dresses new dresses I don't need any new dresses I've got lovely dresses like what new what are they, what are they trying to say nude nude dresses new new dresses new. sounds like new dresses to me that can't be misinterpreted as something else can it New addresses, maybe? New addresses? Sounded like new dresses. <sighs> anyway, see this happens from time to time. I just get confused when I don't understand what they're trying to say. They're gifting me a pain going right down my jaw right here, down the bone, down into my jaw. Look. Back off. I didn't open up to you. We're not supposed to be communicating. Go back to the light, please. Ow. 
new dresses. I don't have money. I, I don't have money to frotter fr fr even for second-hand new dresses. I don't need them. I've got lovely things. Enough is enough. What I need is more money to buy tools for silversmithing, money for my passport, money for my little trip back home, money for new tyres on my car, which I have. I'm sitting on that at the moment. I don't need dresses. It's crazy making, isn't it? 1.57am, time to schluff. The numbers I saw tonight were 12, 22 and 112. Interesting. Good night, Lila Tov. Dream beautifully. My pa my pal talk friends. Oh, sorry. I'm getting. I'm feeling. I'm feeling very. Can you see the oppression on me? I'm feeling. Oh, it's just gone through me. I feel very heavy and exhausted and drained. So I don't know who that is. But back off. You have to leave my energy now. Immediately. Get out of me. Out. My Power Talk friends help me name the two new the two new hens who have nothing of the strong determined spirits of their predecessors, Lilith and Morgana. That's what I named my chooks. I had, I had witches' names. Oh Lilith was a black hen, or oh, she was feisty. She was a true Lilith. Unfortunately the bloody neighbour's dog killed them all. Bastard. Oh my goodness. So I was loath to recycle their names. We didn't have their strong spirit or natures. The new black hen is now Alvira and the new ginger one is Tabitha. I think the names will suit them well. I named the white chicken, the middle one, Astrid. I was watching her walking over to me and just as I pondered on what to call her, the name popped into my head. She practically chose her own name, lol. She is awesome, as our little rooster Merlin and the runt of the clutch, Riri. Riri was growing into a much more assertive hen, as I hoped she would, but boy was she handicapped as a chick. Proof that you should never give up on the little people, hens included. Battling major fatigue and weathering another emotional storm. This time, Lynn's family is in crisis, so I have been there for her as much as possible. I wish for her and me a peaceful, happy life. I certainly, uh, we certainly deserve it. 21st of November, 2011. <coughs> I really need that drink. <clears throat> Nearly finished, guys. I have a strong sense of rejoicing or celebration. I feel like buying some cheap wine and getting drunk, but I had to borrow money from Lynn today. She took me to Golden Circle so I could buy some drinks, juice, cordial, etc. As I've been ill for two weeks with asthma, so I've been drinking a lot of water but I needed something sweeter and more flavoursome. 21st of November 2010 Roslyn Hodemakers with Tanya Phillips, 1970, outside Wellington Zoo. I was five, she was four. Here we are, sweet little girls. Rosalind was taller than me even at four years of age. Hmm. Her father was Dutch and her mother was an East Londoner Cockney. In it! Look how cute we were. Hmm. 
that's Miss Five I talk about as one of my personalities. I don't really have full-blown um, disassociated identity disorder. It's kind of an in-joke. But Miss Five, there she is, that little girl, in her pristine state, as she was... I was still deeply traumatised from my abusive family's emotional abuse, but at this age, I had not yet been sexually abused. So Miss Five... Fierce, beautiful, wild, carefree, joyous, triumphant, determined, courageous. That's her there. That little one there. So, <clears throat> in the club Friday night, a young man... Before the young Māori man that was inappropriate, there was a much younger man sat at the table with me. And he introduced himself and he said his name was Māori. We shook hands, you know. And he started chatting to me. He's just being friendly. just a very young man. I said to him, you, you seem very young, Larry." He said, I'm 22. I said, oh, I said, you are young indeed. And he looks at me randomly announces I was an accident and I had a sense of deja vu I'm sure I had a conversation with someone in that club along those lines a few weeks prior a young gay man who said he was gay and that he was an accident and not and but that his mother had kept him and had left uh, had joined the Jehovah's Witness Church to raise him as a single mother within the confines of that church so I remember having that conversation with that young man. So it's very strange how these young men at the club approach me and almost the first thing out of their mouth is, I was an accident, meaning that they weren't wanted really to be here on this planet, to be sharing the space-time continuum on planet Earth with me. And because it was the second time that a young man in that club had announced rather loudly and boldly, I am an accident. I thought, this is getting a bit fucking intense, man. So I announced to him, aha, so was I. And he smiled. And I said, in fact, honey, I can upstage you. He says, oh, how are you going to do that? I said, well, not only was I an accident, I said, but my 14-year-old sister sat in the abortion clinic with our mother, begging for my life. So I said, not only am I an accident, but I also happen to be a failed abortion. And then the young man and I looked at each other with the kinship of souls who know what it has cost us to be alive on this planet in this moment, in this breath. And we threw our heads back and we laughed and laughed. But of course it's not actually funny, you know, our journey on this planet, being accidental tourists on planet Earth, unwanted and in fact unmurdered, surviving even that I did. So there are no accidents in the multiverses because if you're here and alive in your body, in your spirit, in your time and place and you meet me at the Brooklyn Standard Club and you come up and you want a pity party from me to say, I'm an accident. Honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. There are no accidents. If you're here... You're here for a reason. Embody it, ennoble it, become the best version of yourself in spite of your quirky, <laughs> unwanted, unsanitary, unjust beginnings. Because here you are. Love yourself, love your gods, love your life.
love who you are becoming every moment of every day. It's powerful and it's beautiful and it's poignant and it's fucking awesome and awe-inspiring, by the way. <clears throat> Young Larry cycled back round much later in the evening. His friends actually tore him away from me. I think they were worried he was trying to hook up with me. And I didn't, didn't get that vibe, but maybe they thought I was going to try and seduce this young boy. Maybe they didn't trust me. So his friends, you know, called him away. And much later in the evening, um, can't remember exactly when, if it was before or after, young Kerry got inappropriate with me and I had to swat him like the flea is. But anyway, I was sitting down and young Larry was sitting opposite me again. I just nodded. Hi, Larry. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> so on some level, they are fascinated by what my warrior goddess mystique, right? Even the young lads, far too young for me to ever, ever contemplate um, anything of a sexual nature with them. But they, they sit in my energy and they derive some kind of comfort or joy or delight from it. Who knows? Or some fantasy in their little fucked up heads, maybe. But it's all good, you know. As long as they don't put their hands on me, unwanted and unasked for, I'm okay with them sitting beside me and having a friendly chat and drinking together. No harm, no foul in that. But when they start slathering over me sexually when I've told them no several times... Prepare for thy doom, young man. Prepare for thy fucking doom. Another bad, sad day in paradise. The universe is busy shoveling shit in my direction. But I will look the other way. So used to crap that it just piles up around my feet, keeping me bitter and stinky but hopefully encouraging power surges of new growth in positive directions away from the crap. And a bit later, Crystal's play didn't win, which was disappointing, pardon me, as her performance and the playwriting was superb. I wrote superb. Oh, I'll have to fix that, won't I? typos in my in my published writings <gasps> no bless oblige that's a disgrace oh well they slip through from time to time like a few other things try to slip through from time to time no mistakes in the multiverses everything has a teaching and a lesson even a typo that says suburb once again, misogyny won, with male-oriented issues being chosen over those of women's issues. Not happy, Jan. And that concludes my offerings, my thoughts, my raw, ragged emotions. I'm actually very exhausted now. I might need to go and have a little lie down after I've had a cup of tea. Um, oh, but it's 12.32pm. I do need to take my corsets to be dry cleaned. I haven't been able to wear them because they really are. They really do need a clean. So um, might do that. Might actually do that. Go and have a coffee at Amanda's. Take my corsets in. Because the Tanya must always and forever remain the Tanya in full fun fatale regalia because I was dressed, what was I wearing uh, Friday? And I wasn't wearing my corset, was I? Because they're dirty and need cleaning. Oh yes, I wore that lovely black long dress with the tribal kind of sequin design. It's got a tribal design and it's a lovely dress. But it's, see, it was probably too too vulnerable looking, too, too soft. When Mama T dresses in her 
corsets. No motherfucker dares put a hand his hand on me. Isn't that weird? How they will respect a corset, but not a lovely dress. So I've I've learnt this over time that you have to dress accordingly to how you expect to be treated. You literally have to wear your regalia and your power clothes. So um, this Friday, I'll probably... Oh, my corset won't be dry cleaned in time. Won't be ready in time. Fuck. Mm, it's a worry. I'll probably wear my Viking top hat, my boots, my... I think I will... I think I have a corset in the in the cupboard if it still fits that I haven't worn in a long time. I think I will have a corset on. Let the boys know. Get back in your box, boys. There'll be no touching and groping going on here. Because that just sends me in, into a rage. It's just so disrespectful and dishonouring. So, um, anyway... I'll have to think about it because at the moment the way I feel I, I've had very bad asthma yesterday I was very ill actually very fucking ill and today I don't feel I'm not coughing as much and I'm not wheezing as much but I just feel drained I feel drained right out and um, yeah so I'll see how I feel if I don't feel well on Friday I'll stay home and rest because I don't have to torture myself or punish myself. I go out to dance and be joyous and gain gain downloads from spirit when I'm in my zone, you know. It is very powerful healing for me, but it's probably not wise to do that when I'm already quite physically depleted and wrung out. It puts me in a position of vulnerability and allows unholy imps to try and you know, molest or harass me, so we can't have that. You cannot have that, people. So on a happy note, I bid you adieu and have a wonderful day, night, evening, afternoon, morning in the space-time continuum. Be joyful, be blessed, be courageous. As I said earlier, stand in your own autonomy and authority in your own light, surrounded by the gods of your understanding and your ancient ancestors that love you and guard you and protect you and guide you and reveal to you true hearts and minds who really loves you and is worthy of being your, you know, husband or wife or partner according to thine gender. And... Um, who who is true with you for you standing by you and um yeah enjoy your your families your communities your tribes your nationhood take pride in who you are on your walk on planet or earth and whatever form that your soul has been implanted in whatever race, whatever colour, whatever ethos, whatever religion, whatever class or creed or um, isness that you are, embody all that you are and with honour before the gods, take pride in who you are and love each other, love the other, even though they might not look like you, they might not think like you, they might not speak your language, they may not share your culture. Just love them. Let them have their walk and their way. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to live like them. Just let them go and be. As long as they're not harming you or your, your children or your family or you know, and they're just living their best life, surviving like each of us must do on planet Earth, according to our own um, spirits. Harm no one. Hate no one. 
let it all go. The ones that are meant to be with you, who will treat you with honour and integrity, with heartfelt intention and truest, deepest love, will reveal themselves. You will know by their actions who they truly are and who is worthy of you. And that is also a message for me, myself, that I present to you, for you and for me, to take great note of and take courage in. The gods are speaking to us daily and nightly while we're sleeping, by the way. So be ready, for the times are a-changing. And as I said, we need Ubuntu communities. We need to hold the line, bring everyone together. Even the stragglers and the broken ones like me, held in sacred trust and even more sacred trust. God's bless. Love is the law. So I send love from the multiverses, from Ainsoth or down to Malkut, down to this earth, this 3D reality, channeled down through all Sephirot, cleansed and purified, strengthened and ennobled, emboldened, uplifted and blessed. I send you love and I embody that love also. Hold, hold true all that is you. God's bless. Bye for now.